and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking? Uh, near Dark Czech Dark Lager. Today we are doing 1990s Bride of Reanimator. If you couldn't tell from our special intro that we had today, which was actually made for us by uh, a fan, Tyrone Deese. Thank you very much. Directed by Brian Usna, and he did the, uh, the very weird off-the-wall movie Society, and he also did Return of the Living Dead 3. The movie, of course, stars Jeffrey Combs, a horror movie legend. He was, of course, in the first Reanimator. He's in From Beyond. Yeah. You know, Ken Four in his, uh, his underwear. His, his gitch, of course. <laughs> he's in Castle Freak, and he's like a Star Trek mainstay. In Deep Space Nine, he plays Wei Yoon. He plays Liquidator Brunt. In Enterprise, he plays Andorian Shran. It also stars Bruce Abbott, who is in the movie Bad Dreams we just covered. Mm -hmm. And people are giving a shit for not mentioning the fact <laughs> he was in the Reanimator movies. So, yeah, sorry, we're a bunch of pricks. Lastly, we want to mention Kathleen Kinmont, because she's in Halloween 4. That's right. Cops do it by the book. We're just gonna take on a bit of a rehash from the first one. Herbert and Dan have this reagent that they created. They reanimate dead bodies for experiments. There's Dr. Hill, who's kind of snooping around. They end up killing him, and then they reanimate his head with the reagent. Dr. Hill kind of has this big vendetta against mostly Herbert. In a very <laughs> small nutshell. This movie starts off about eight months later and it takes place during a, a war zone in Peru. We learn that Herbert and Dan are medics. Also, there's a girl there that sort of Dan's kind of interested in, Francesca, and seeing all the stuff sort of behind the scenes, right? The shit hits the fan big time, so Herbert's like, we gotta get out of here, let's get back to America. They're back <laughs> doing their own routine, right? At the university hospital. There's a girl who's dying, Gloria, who Dan is kind of smitten with a little bit. Herbert, on the other hand, he wants to continue the research. There's this closet or this room in the morgue, the experiments from the first movie. Police evidence. Which is weird because you'd think it'd be in an actual police locker. Yeah, not just in a <laughs> hospital <laughs> yeah. for anyone to just rifle through. Yeah, yeah, there's not even a lock on the door or anything. Herbert's going in there to steal items for his experiments. Picks up a heart and it turns out to be Dan's old girlfriend's heart from the first movie. He also sees poor Dr. Hill's head wrapped in the bag <laughs> and kind of just says hello, basically. <laughs> He's also stealing, like, body parts from corpses. Herbert kind of just fools around and takes, like, a few fingers and, and an eyeball, kind of stitches them together and uses this reagent, kind of creates this little kind of monster yeah, type yeah. thing and is <laughs> walking around there's a lieutenant chapham that's been kind of snooping around and while he's sitting on the couch there's this little that little <laughs> fingered monster <laughs> thing that's kind of going around him which he doesn't see yeah but herbert and dan are kind of noticing they're like Tr they're all trying to get it while they're <laughs> yeah. and chapman kind of stands up and like just throws a book on it unwittingly and crushes the poor thing there's a doctor graves he works in the morgue looking around and he catches a vial of this reagent and he also sees dr hill's head so naturally what are you going to do right well you're going to use the reagent on the head <laughs> revives Dr. Hill. I saw you at that conference in Zurich. Idiotic garbage. <laughs> Just give, starts giving him shit right away. Dr. Graves is kind of shook up about the whole thing. He mixes all his whiskey in one of those beakers with that giant stir stick. Drinks it down takes Dr. Hill's head, wraps it in a towel, and just throws it in the garbage. <laughs> Dan's kind of had enough of these experiments. Herbert has Megan's heart and entices Dan to keep the experiments going because what we'll do is we'll put the heart in a new body and Megan will live again. One day when they're trying to steal this dead body out of the hospital, they have it in like a wheelchair and it's Kind of oh, like Weekend at yeah, Bernie's. Weekend at Bernie's style, <laughs> trying to get it out of the hospital. They run into Francesco. Her and Dan start hitting it off. Like, this guy's a fucking horn dog. Yeah, He's falling exactly. in love with, like, the dying girl. He's in love with Francesca. They strike up a date. 
So then she comes over for her date, and her and Dan are getting a little kind of frisky. <laughs> Lieutenant Chapman is bro broken into the house and confronts Herbert in the laboratory. They get into a big fight. They're knocking over all this lab equipment, and Dan comes down. It's like, what the hell did you just do? This guy's investigating us, yeah. and you just go and kill him? Like, now they're really going to nail our asses <laughs> yeah, right. to the wall, right? Who's to say he's dead, and he uses the reagent to reanimate him, and... Well, now it's a zombie yeah. Lieutenant Chapman. <laughs> Kills Francesca's dog, he just grabs it and... Yeah. The patient that Dan has been spitting with, Gloria, she dies. The first thing that Herbert does, well, he steals her head, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do, yeah. Zombie Lieutenant Chapman <laughs> has made its way to the hospital and found Dr. Hill's head. He confronts Dr. Graves and forces Dr. Graves to kind of perform the surgery and put these bat wings onto the... <laughs> The head of Dr. Hill. Dan's kind of done, right? And he's like, oh, I've had enough. And then Herbert reveals their mm -hmm. experiment. He's put the head of Gloria on the body to kind of cap it off. Yeah. So it's got Gloria's head, Megan's heart. They're about to revive the body. And in the meantime, the head of Dr. <laughs> Hill and Zombie Chapman and a couple of other of these zombie things are kind of approaching the house. Yeah to get their revenge, and that's where we're gonna stop the plot. If you wanna see what happens at the end of Bride of Reanimator, finish watching the movie. This movie is pretty wicked as a sequel, right? Oh yeah, for a sequel, it's great. <laughs> like, why didn't we see it when we were kids? I think because the <sighs> movie cover was so shitty, it was just like, Again? Like, it was like just like, <laughs> Dr. West like this, like, okay, well, it just looks like the first movie, mm -hmm. and whatever and I don't want to watch a shitty version of the first movie I won't bother right I think it's kind of the title kind of has a bit to play with it too yeah. right at least for me it's like yeah. um the bride of the reanimator like well that's just like the bride of Frankenstein yeah. like eh, yeah. I don't feel like watching it but it's actually a super legit sequel yeah. and one of the coolest things about it, it it is a direct continuation it's not just a rehash the same fucking characters. Same cast. They literally continue the movie. We're trying to put together this episode, and it's kind of tough because there's all these subplots, all these parallel plots running at once. It's not simple. It's not a simple no, movie. No. It's, it's a very smart sequel, and it's done cohesively, like extremely cohesively. There's all this stuff going on, but it manages to stay on point. And it all converges at the end. All these kind of subplots all meet at the end. Exactly. It, it, and it it kind of rounds everything out and finishes the job, yeah, right? Yeah. You have the plot of Herbert and Dan continuing their work, mm -hmm. and Herbert always kind of like controlling Dan, and then there's the other plot of Dr. Heel's head <laughs> yeah. getting reanimated and trying to find its way back to getting its revenge, and there's also the subplot of like the lieutenant mm -hmm. trying to get them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. How does Dr. Hill's head manage to do all of these things? Because he's a very <laughs> persuasive head. It's just the head! Yeah. Come on! And he gets a lot done. <laughs> exactly, fuck. <laughs> very productive head. More than most whole bodies can get done in their entire <laughs> yeah. lifetime. The production value of this movie is amazing. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's great. Like, the stop-motion animation of all the little creatures that Herbert makes. Is fuck, that's yeah. great! laboratory sets and like the the underground crypt and all that stuff and all of the shots outside of their house with yeah. the fog and everything a little cemetery yeah. and stuff and all the kind of the vivid lighting it still has that look of the original reanimated mm -hmm. with all like the very hard green comedy is wicked in this movie yeah. right they don't overdo it not unless they have to right and they know where to do it too, exactly right? yeah i mean it's it's done in a, in a smart way it's very hard to make, I think, a really good horror comedy because they try sometimes too hard with the comedy mm -hmm. and try to make it too funny. And then it's just too silly and right. stupid. Right, yeah. And this movie has a perfect balance of the, the horror and the comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it also plays plays well with the subject matter because they're reanimating corpses, so it's yeah. kind of done in a silly way because you they're can, not yeah. experts at this. You can go over the top of that, right? <laughs> yeah, you just got to make sure to do it in a proper way. I like how it's a kind of a neat parallel with the original Frankenstein story. Herbert West is Dr. Victor Frankenstein, and the monster he creates is actually Dan. <laughs> right. Because he's always controlling Dan and making Dan do these awful things. Kind of created this monster, which is yeah. Dan. In the book, what does the monster want? 
a bride. And in this movie, what is Dan always looking for? A woman. I'm going to build you a woman. All right. The perfect woman. Yeah, just like in the book, right? <laughs> the original one and this one, it kind of mirrors what really happened, you know, two, three hundred years ago with like actual experiments that real doctors did, right? They dug up corpses, did all this weird, did shit, all this weird shit to like learn anatomy yeah. and stuff like that, right? I yeah. kind of like how it mirrors this. Where... Even all those weird Nazi experiments Yeah, and yeah, stuff. it's strange, yeah. eh? Like, like Herbert is kind of like that. And he gets more and more corrupt while he's doing it too, right? He's gone past the point of doing it for the benefit of science. The characters in this movie are, are great. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that they're able to keep most of the characters, like all the major characters from the first movie, into the second one to break them apart would be blasphemy. Exactly, right? yeah. Well, the movie just wouldn't have the same mesh as it does, yeah. right? You take one person out and everything collapses around yeah. it, right? Jeffrey Combs almost wasn't in this movie, right? Right, he had prior engagements to, to shoot another movie, and I think that kind of fell through. Mm -hmm. So he was able to do this, but like, what would they have done if they couldn't get him on board? They would have to write like a completely different script. Yeah, and it just, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Plain and simple. So why would you make this movie without Jeffrey Combs? Why would you even think about it, right? For the money. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> if you ever kind of put Bride of Reanimator aside just because you thought it was a cheap sequel, don't. Yeah. Please, please just watch it because it's as good, if not... I think sometimes even better than the original. I kind of prefer this a little I kind more. of enjoy this more than the original. Not to say it's better, but mm. I enjoy it more than the original because it's more it's it's more over the top. Right. There's more madness, it's a little bit more silly, there's a bit more action. You know, the ending is crazy, you know, the shit really hits the fan. <laughs> yep. You really get to see all this weird stuff that Herbert was up to. And it also kind of leaves it open for another sequel. And until next time, keep drinking. And uh, if you die from drinking, you can get the reagent and come back to life. Fuck alcohol poisoning. <laughs> yeah, exactly.